really enjoyed it. I and we went to know it. There was some parts that were very graphic to me. We were talking at one stage. We were talking about the Trinasium. Yeah. And I felt, I felt it was there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like you were talking about older shot. You were talking about Catherine, and I was thinking older shot. Yeah. But I still get the same feeling. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. And I thought that came across extremely well. And the, what I have mentioned as well to you is I've only seen one other book written in the, the manner that you and your sister wrote. Yeah. You know, the book was called uh, When the Fighting Is Over. Mm-hmm. About a guy who gets shot in front of us. Yeah. And, uh, and what happened is the father would come in and tell you what his thought plan was at the time. Mm-hmm. And what I gathered from it was there was another lot of support for you there. Can you try and explain it to me? Um, well, my sister obviously was uh, notified by our local media yeah. um, that something had happened. Obviously, I was telling her yeah. we're being uh, taken to port and we're just doing formalities mm-hmm. by paperwork and, and that's how it was yeah. uh, looking like. And then it just got to a point where they just the local boys felt a bit, I would say, a bit embarrassed that yeah. the other the other p- p- uh, places, the other uh, organisations around India were saying, well, we can't see a problem here, so yeah. we're leaving. And I think that's when they just decided to just lie yeah. and say these weapons are illegal. And for my sister to hear that and have my own dad tell me on the phone, right, I want to know the truth. Are you transporting illegal weapons? Yeah. Because what we're being told in the, the media from India is this, this, that, and the other. Tell me, as my son, the truth. And I said, Dad, I am not transporting illegal weapons. I am here to protect yeah. Indian, other nationalities on vessels going from A to B in hostile waters and making sure you know that the, the vessel and the cargo goes unscathed. So the support that my sister showed built a lot of momentum. Yeah. Because my sister went, oh this is an injustice. And you got UK and you got India and you and then, as a previous Prime Minister referred to in a Brosman relationship and I was like, well, yeah. it's very Brosman for us when we're languishing in an Indian prison for a crime we've not committed. So my sister was always in the media, not because she enjoyed it, yeah. it's because she, what she felt that she needed the support from the public. And the media, a lot of people are a bit apprehensive with the media, but my experience with the media has been fantastic. Yes. They were very supportive for me and my family, and they didn't exaggerate or lie about the main the Okay, fair enough, they may have got me age wrong on a a newspaper or, or, or something like that, but. When it was in regards to the actual case itself, none of it was lies because it came, if it didn't come from my sister, the MPC, yeah. via the lawyer or myself, they just wouldn't know anything. So my sister would always say, Nick, can you try and confirm what I'm hearing is correct? And they just built up and built up and built up and my sister, she just went, you know what? We need the support. I want to let the world know yeah. of the injustice that my brother is facing. Yeah. So that's when it went like that, with the help of our local media, which I thank so much. And then it just built up, but we can't see a lot of it, especially with the time when we're in prison. And even to this day, my sister says it didn't get what it needed yeah. and what it deserved. I think simply because we're all Northerners, yeah. plus one Scottish guy. And that's the reason I believe the North-South divide, as yeah. we all know. Yeah. If there was someone from London itself, I guarantee the embassy yeah. and the British government would have acted a lot better, I believe. Yeah. 
Um, I don't have a problem with the British government, yeah. but I do like to remind them on where they failed. Yeah. But other than that, I have no issues, especially the embassy. The embassy, what they did for me was second to that. I had no issues, absolutely no problems with the embassy. It's just those higher, yeah. especially when you're sat in an Indian prison and you've got two different foreign ministers yeah. coming and saying you, which doesn't happen yeah. to any UK prisoner. And they're telling you they're doing everything they can. Yeah. And I'm sat there thinking, I don't believe them. But I'm just going to crack on. Yeah. Got me support from amazing, lovely people around the world and you and the United Kingdom. Now I'm, I'm receiving letters and parcels from as far as America, Canada, Australia. So this, even though in my sister's eyes she felt it should have been bigger, yeah. it still reached the, the four corners of the, the the world, so to speak. But it was still held back. Yes. It should have gotten a lot more because, yes, I think it's because of the job we're doing, we're doing private security, you know, and I think that's a lot of confusion with a lot of people. Yes. They believe we were still in the military when we're doing that. And I, when I would hear that and I respond and, and go, if we were in the military, we wouldn't have been in prison yeah. very long. We would have been out before you know it. And people have joked on and said, oh, the SES should have broke, yeah. broke you out of prison. I, was, I would have loved it if a rope just came down yeah. and a Chinook was hovering. I would have been yeah. straight on that rope. Yeah. No, um, during the time when I was out of prison, we spent like a year and a half out of prison with yeah. no charges. I was a free yeah. man. But I'm not earning a, a wage. My family's having to support me to keep me in a bed seat, like a yeah. hostel, to feed me. Yes, I, I was receiving charity money from uh, British Legion, Parachute Regiment Association, and uh, other yeah. elements like friends, family, etc. Yeah. But I don't want to feel like I was yeah. a financial burden. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, in that situation, it's hard to accept. But when I, when they're saying take it now yeah. you'll need it what am i supposed to do i'm going to take yeah. it because it's a goodwill gesture yeah. but what i i read in the book i identify with you a few occasions mm. one is the keyboard warriors the people who can't see it must have been a lot deeper than that there must have been some more food and i hear it all the time you know the the, the, the fact that i was what i, I was I'm no longer that, but you know, they, they, they just, they feel they've got to, to mean someone. Yes. And, you, and, 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 and when you check out the people that's done it, there's, no, there's nobody yourself, there's wannabes. Yeah. So what they do is try and pull down people. That's my experience of it. Mm. And I noticed that in your group, that they were sniping at you. I've, I've noticed a few comments yeah. and I try not to let it to yeah. get it to me um, because I feel like, you're always going to get people like that. Yeah. There's always someone who thinks the no. Yeah. And I've came to con yeah, I've came across people where they were talking about it. Yeah. They didn't recognise us at the time. Yes. And I was stood there and I was listening to them talking about it. And I was just thinking, where the hell are they that? Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. And then I, I just interrupted. I went, oh, that's uh, that's. Nice to know. I didn't know that. Where did he? Who told you that? Oh, it's just something I heard. Well, do you want to hear something from the actual person who was in prison in India? And they've gone. I, 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 I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I, I said, look, man, it's fine. Don't worry. I'm. I'm not. That. But what I'm trying to say is, if you want to know what went on, come and talk to me. Yeah. Don't listen to third party. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? You mentioned the parachute regiment quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, you know, who you fell back in the training all the time. Yeah. Which I thought, you know, that's the way it was. That that is the man they produced. And uh, I think 
And I, yes, I'm going to big up the parish regiment. Yeah. You know, we are an elite regiment, and to be a parish regiment soldier, you have to go above and beyond to do the training and the maroon machine. <laughs> to, to get that maroon machine and yeah. to have that cap badge above your left eye is something that you, you dream of. And yeah. when you officially get that illustrious berry on your your your, your head. You feel an aura about you and, yeah. and your training and the, the, the never give up attitude and the, you know, to get to that next level or to get to that next uh, firing position yeah. and attack and attack and attack. I had to instill that, I had to, I had to go back to my, my military training yeah. to take that mental attitude. Because I'm not doing the physical stuff as the military, but I'm, I've got to have that mental, robust attitude yeah. to survive. And I had to call upon that. Yeah. And even that sometimes wasn't enough. Because yeah. I went far. Yeah. You know, I was further down the rabbit hole to the pits of hell. I needed to call upon something else. I needed more to, to carry on. And that's when friends, family, support, comes in here, people where they're, they're turning around and going, don't give in Nick. And these people don't know me. They're from around the world, writing me letters saying, come on Nick, don't give in. And did you ever feel yourself becoming spiritual? You know, I, I went, I used to go around the toilets and it was a hellish place. Yeah. It absolutely reeked and you could see the, yeah. The, the stuff coming out of the, the pipe and you're just like that. Oh. And one of the, in, and I used to go there to talk to God, and I'm not a, a religious man, but I think in in these kind of situations, you, you, your mind, I won't say plays tricks on you, but your, your mind starts and... Is it open up a bit? It opened yeah. up, up, and I went there and I, I was, and even one of the Indians went, Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, why are you sat here? I said, I'm, I'm talking to God. Yeah. I, I, I want to know why I'm here. Yeah. And he goes, well, from what I can see, Mr. Nick, he will probably tell you to get away from the toilets because it's stinking. <laughs> and I was like, and I had a laugh. And I was like, the reason why I've come here is because I don't, it's because I thought I would be alone. No one would come around here. Yeah, yeah. Because when I'm in that moment, I can't smell yeah. the, the, the piss and the shit. Yeah. I can't smell that. I'm just having a moment. And I always used to just talk to myself, but I'm talking to him so hopefully yeah. he can listen. And I wasn't getting any answers. Or was I? Or was the answer not the answer that I thought? at the time, but Nick, you can do this. One of the things I often thought, you used to get myself into the shit, yeah. you know, was, you know, I did it once in the book, God's delays are not necessarily good, rejection can see mm -hmm. that. And the, that's what used to keep me going, because I, I, I was a Christian case, we couldn't do that. I was in Gloucester, you know. <laughs> we get fed every day and whatnot. Yeah. The only thing that, uh, that I noticed there was, you know, the guys would let themselves down. And, yeah. and that was the thing that impressed me. You know, you were hanging on all the time, and hanging on to what you had. And it may have been, what I feel could have been those conditions that you know, told me all the more, you know. I think we've been in prison and told being yeah. told in a letter about my mum having to double yeah. that prison fine just literally five days before yeah. Christmas 2013. Yeah. I think mean, that is what separated me yeah. from my previous self. Yeah. I had to show resilience yeah. to the highest order because not only when I'm walking back nearly a mile from the jailer's office, to my compound and getting stones thrown at me by the local Indian prisoners, yeah. verbal abuse. Yes, I couldn't really work out the language, yeah. but I could tell it was yeah, abuse. Yeah. 
and to be in a tunnel of vision and to have that red mist creeping down and to keep pushing it away because if I had let the red mist take control that would have been it I probably wouldn't be here today um, and I'm quite thankful I had that uh, resilience to not let matters get worse. But one of the things again that comes out of it is you can back up your hand from your system. You know the, the, the condition that the, the drives you had to try and get the release. I, I've always I've always said to my sister if she was born a bloke she'd be a power trooper because she has all the qualities yeah. of a power trooper. The never give up attitude yeah. the the determination yeah. to achieve targets. But being a sister, it just goes. And I, and the thing is, I know not everyone's families are as close knit as mine. And I'm very grateful, and it's definitely something that I'm, I'm not going to take for granted because you only get one family, so to speak. And I just got to look back in time to the, the dark years of my life. My sister didn't have to do anything. Yeah. What she did. She, it comes it comes in, you know, a feeling comes out of the one book. The other thing is, you know, you're all in tight conditions there. Mm. Was there any, was there any animosity between you? Was they would get out Yeah, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna I'm, lie. I'm not asking you to talk about something. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Of course there was animosity, because yeah. animosity would have one. Yeah. We're all from, we're, there's, there's three different countrymen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, um, because the 12 Indians, they were yeah. different, yeah. And, yeah. and the 23 foreigners, three different nationalities yeah. all together. Yeah. Of course, you, we all come from different backgrounds, we all have yeah. different mental aspects, we all have ways of dealing with things. Yeah. Some people may have dealt with it in a different way to others, and some people might have thought, well, uh, are struggling and yeah. some people may have thought well I'm dealing I try to stay as positive as best I can maybe I unmasked a lot of my yeah. emotions and maybe with what happened in the recent months with obviously my, more, my own mental health maybe that was probably better to if it happened at home in yeah. peace time than for my mind to have Gone berserk whilst in the prison because I wouldn't be in control. How do you feel now? Um, I've, when I look back at March, when I had a, a bit of a mental wobbler, um, yeah. now what I look at what, what, what form did that take? I, I if you don't mind me asking, no, no, I'm I'm open and I and when I talk about my mental health, I hope it. Yeah. Um, finds other people who are suffering and yeah. they don't do what I do. Yeah. I'm not trying to preach, but I was stubborn. Yeah. I'm stubborn anyways. Parish regiment soldiers are stubborn. Yeah. I also felt that I was in control. I also felt that, yes, I do have a problem, but I do believe I've got it under control and it's not as bad as what someone else yeah. and if I went at the time to seek help I personally believe that I may have been taking the resources from others that's how my mental state was working however I was just palming things off the demons come for you when the demons come you can't run away from them you have to stand up like an, an adult a man or a woman and face it. You've got you can't run away. Yeah. Because if you keep palming things off, it just yeah. manifests. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it caught me and I wanted to throw it all away. I wanted to end it. I wanted to end the pain, the suffering. Yeah. I wanted nothing. And when I came back from India I was still in that survival mode, yes. and all I heard was mental health this, mental health that. I'm, 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 I'm now talking back then, yeah. being naive. I was like, why is everyone being pissy? Blah, 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 blah. 
But as time has gone by and um, the good times are happening and time of peace and, and I'm not in that mood, mindset anymore, I'm relaxing. And then this happens to us. I never thought it was going to happen, but I understand and I really understand now. And people have even come to me and say, Nick, I'm, I'm really finding it hard, but what, what you've experienced and how you've conducted yourself and explained who for me. I think I've handled it good. Yeah. To this day, why didn't I go through with it? Yeah. I think I'm going to put it down to I was just that mentally exhausted. Yeah. That mentally exhausted. And I let the cat out of the bag and the sister went into man mode. Yeah. And when I'd finished my night shift, and I was just in my dressing gown because it was March, still cold a bit. And I was just sat there and just oblivious to everything. Where are you now? I'm in a fantastic establishment yeah. which supports veterans and is an unbelievable place. And me mentally, me hand on my heart, I feel I'm in a better place now. Because I've been open, I've, I've took the help available. Yeah. And any advice that I can give anyone who's suffering mentally, pick up the phone. Yeah. Don't dwell, don't harm it off, don't do what I've done yeah. and think you've got it handled. You've got in, you, you're in control because you're not. But when other family members or friends are getting on your back, don't, you know, don't argue with them because they will see it more than you. And my sister and I were arguing like cats and dogs because she could see my demise. She could see me slipping down that dark hole and deteriorating. And I think I just put the shits up me yeah. and reality's just hit. And I've gone, I need to address this. Well done. I need to do something. I need help. So if you're suffering, seek help. Yeah. It's the best thing you'll do. Ever. You're an inspiring man yourself. Thank you. No problem. Would you? Just like to uh, explain your book and um, where people can buy it from, please, Nick. Yeah, this is my book, Surviving Hell. Um, the best place to buy this is on Amazon, where you can get audio. Sorry, you can't get audio book yet. You can get Kindle version, hardback, and paperback. You can also go to Waterstones um, and other book outlets. You can also go on, I think, WH Smith online and order it and the WH Smith shops in like say airports etc but yeah and if you want a signed copy you can directly message me on social media and I will have these sort of signed copy for you. Please read, you'll enjoy it. <laughs>